Good morning everybody. Welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board and I am broadcasting live from my studio. Just in case you haven't joined us before. Um, Technique Tuesday has been going about a year now and uh, every Tuesday at 10 o'clock uh, in the past I was recording things, little snippets of things that I had done and uh, sharing them with you so that hopefully it helps you out uh, with your own painting experiences. Since we've been in these extraordinary times, I have been broadcasting live because it's nice to keep in touch with you all. And uh, you have been very kindly chatting uh, to me and amongst yourselves in the comments. If you happen to be watching this uh, via catch up or if you're watching this on an alternative platform, then some of the things might not make sense because it was broadcast live and because I am referring to comments that were popping up on Facebook. So let's just see who's in the room today. Um, now let's have a look. Uh, good morning to everybody who has just joined. Um, good morning, Helen. Good morning, Leanne. Uh, Liz, good morning. First time I've been able to watch live as I'm usually at work. Looking forward to this. You are very, very welcome. Uh, lots of people. Good morning, Val. Um, oh, bless you, Val. Val is saying uh, happy anniversary for later this week. Uh, thank you very much. That's very kind. It's my wedding anniversary at the weekend, so I'm taking a cheeky couple of days off. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning from Sweden. Sup, Gary? Uh, Elaine saying that um, she's uh, her sheep escaped last night and she's called away. Go! Go rescue your sheep. Don't be watching me. You can catch up on this later. If you uh, would like to catch up on this later, you can do that in a couple of different ways. It will be available on YouTube. It will be available under the videos tab on my Facebook page. And if you'd like to read a little bit more about uh, the broadcast this morning, then you can read about it on my blog and there'll be a link to the YouTube video there. Now, you might be able to hear a few background noises this morning. That's because in Dorset today, it is a beautiful morning. It's absolutely stunning weather here today. And it was far too warm to be keeping all the doors and windows shut in the studio because I'm under a huge great bank of lights and a huge great bank of technology. So I didn't want to have the door closed. So if you hear farm machinery or if the Jack Russells start barking or the chickens start singing their egg song, then it's all just part and parcel of the broadcast this morning. It's the joy of living where I do. Who else is joining us this morning? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, lots of people saying that it's going to be a hot one. I know some people are in Dorset as well and experiencing the same weather. I really hope the weather's as beautiful where you are. Um, what have we got? Ah, we have the American contingent in the room. Good morning to you. I shudder to think what time it is where you are. Thank you for getting up so early to tune in. Uh, yes, and it's going to be a real hot one today. Um, lots of people looking forward to this. Uh, what else have we got? Good morning, Chris. Uh, oh gosh, lots of people. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about the really unusual part of uh, a watercolorist's toolbox, and that is black watercolor paper. Now, if you've read my book, and there's a shameless plug in there, if you've read my book, you will know that black watercolour paper is something that I really like to use on. So think of it like this. Normally, as watercolour painters, we are working on a white subject, on a white surface even, and we are going from the lightest thing, which is our white paper, all the way through to our darkest thing, which we are going to add in paint or pen or whatever particular medium you happen to be using on that. Now, using black watercolour paper, you have to switch your head around. So you're starting with the darkest thing. So you've got your darkest shadows going on. They're all there done for you. And you're working backwards towards a lightest part. It's kind of a bit more like an acrylic painter would think or an oil painter would think but there's no reason at all why, as a watercolour painter, you can't adopt this same way of working. There are a couple of um, things that uh, you need to think about a little bit differently, but I'm going to take you through all of that. And what I'm going to do today, another shameless plug coming up, 
is that there are two reasons why I wanted to share the black watercolour paper with you this morning, because I have two demonstrations coming up. I have one tomorrow on uh, Wednesday the 24th of June, if you're watching this on Catch Up, just in case you're watching after the event, at 11am, that is over on the SAA's site. There'll be more details coming about about how you can uh, join that if you are a member, and that's when I will be painting the dragonflies, and I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek as to what I'm doing so that hopefully uh, you can join me then. And on Friday, so um, what's that, 24th, uh, 25th, 26th, of June, I've lost the ability to count, um, I will be back on television again, which I'm really excited about. I haven't left the studio since February. And I'm going to be back on TV on the Hashanda channel. So just going to look at my piece of paper to remind me the channels. So that is Sky channel 673, Freesat channel 817, and Freeview channel 85. Or if you're not in the UK, then you can watch it via hachanda.com. H-O-C-H-A-N-D-A, where I will also be working on black watercolour paper and I'll be um, demonstrating a couple of products that you might not have seen before. So do tune into that if you can. So who else is in the room? Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, all sorts of people tuning in this morning. Good morning, you're very welcome. Um, mum, 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 who have we got? Uh, good morning from Nottingham. Um, right, Lou is asking, is black paper the same price as white? I'm going to go through all of those for you, Lou. Um, and good morning, Pippa, down the road. Right, let's switch you to the overhead camera so that you can see some of the things that I have got uh, to share with you today. So I've got four different black surfaces today. A couple of them are similar, but I thought some of the things you might not have thought about before. Um, so, uh, Marion is asking, can you make your watercolour paper black with something, i.e. watercolour or brush -o or acrylic inks? Yes, absolutely you can, Marion. The only problem that you've got is if you use black watercolour or black brush -o and then you paint over the top in watercolour, it is going to pick up some of that colour off the surface. If you paint over watercolour paper with acrylic ink, then it's going to repel watercolour that goes over the top. So you just have to think about the layers and what it is you're going to use. There is, of course, for those of you that know about black um, about watercolour ground, there is a black version of that. So you can buy a primer actually to, to put black all over your surface. So I hope that answers your question. Let's have a look at these uh, four surfaces, shall we? So here's one that I use uh, quite a lot, and uh, this is certainly a surface that we featured in the book. This is actually black mount board. So this is something that you would traditionally cut a picture mount out of, and I use uh, actually black mount board a lot if I am painting on a black surface. So it gives a bit of an extension of that. But it's a lovely, uh, smooth surface. You can paint on it. If you really like doing detailed work or line work, then this is quite a nice thing to do, particularly for pens, uh, gel pens, all of those kind of things. And of course, it's white on the other side, so you've got the, the best of both worlds. So that's uh, something for your consideration. And this was actually an offcut uh, from a mount that I had cut myself. So actually, it kind of uses up the scraps really nicely. So you could think about that. Now, Frisk, um, a company who uh, produce rather a lot of very lovely art materials, they produce a black pad as well. And if I am correct, they do it in two weights. They do it in 135 gram. They do it in a heavier one, which I think is 300 gram. And that's a very lovely black surface too. One of the things to keep in mind is the variation of blacks. So if you look at those, this is a very dense black by comparison with the Frisk pad, which is looks slightly greyer, actually, underneath my camera. But you can see if I take that away, um, you've got uh, a nice surface. This is a, a thin, almost like a sort of cartridge paper. So if you weren't using anything wet, then the 135 gram would be um, absolutely fine. Something heavier, you might want to go for the 300. And actually, this uh, pad is very reasonable. I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but um, you get a lot for your money with this one. So that is definitely the uh, something to consider. This is A3. You can get it in A4 as well. Made by Art Co. and available through the SAA. 
Now here is a product that I use an awful lot and this is going to feature in my Hashanda demonstration on Friday. This is the Van Gogh brand and this is their black watercolour paper. It tends to come in pads, either A3 size, which is this one, or the A4 one, which is half of it. And this is the 360 gram, so around about the kind of 140 pound-ish, but I'm not going to bore you with paper technology and paper information today. Uh, you've got 12 sheets in the pad. If I remember correctly from the SAA, this is about 17 pounds for the pad. So I think it's kind of comparable with a really good quality pad like Saunders Waterford, something like that. And uh, when I peel back, you will see evidence of where I have demonstrated on it before. So this was something I was experimenting with, I think the last time I was on Hashanda actually, which was using different watercolours, different inks, different pens uh, on that paper. And you can see it gives it a really interesting effect, very atmospheric. You can do some really interesting things with this. Now, this is my uh, beloved chicken, Buffy, who hasn't started singing her egg song yet, but I'm sure it's imminent. And one of the reasons I wanted to show you this finished, uh, well, not finished, but um, much more advanced painting is so that we can talk about lights over darks. So here in the background, I have used watercolour. Now, those of you who are experienced in watercolour might be thinking, hang on a minute, I thought watercolour was supposed to be transparent. And a lot of watercolour colours are, but there are watercolours in ranges which are opaque and so they cover and we've got evidence of a couple of them here. So in the background, I used three of the SAA's watercolours. I have got uh, Potter's Green, I've got Potter's Blue and I've got some of their beautiful silver as well. So if I tip that into the camera, hopefully you can see it's got a bit of a shimmer going on. And as Buffy is the queen of my hens, I thought she deserved it. Other things that we've got going on over here, we've got some of the white gouache, which I'm going to talk about in a second for her beak. And I've also got a little bit of Posca pen here too. Again, I'm going to talk about those in a second. I went for a slightly metallic one. I'm hoping that you can see that slight little bit of glitter in the camera. But what you will notice is that I've left all the darks behind. So like her beady little eye and uh, some of the kind of outlines that I've left, I've allowed the paper to do that rather than necessarily going back in and putting my darks in. I've reversed my process, left my darks behind and added in all of my highlights. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Now, talking about the demonstration that I am going to be doing tomorrow for the SAA, which is my dragonfly demonstration, this is the black surface that I'm going to be working on tomorrow. This is actually a paper that I've not worked on before. Uh, always the time to be demonstrating it live, isn't it, if you've not worked on something before, but I quite like the adrenaline rush. Now this is made by Claire Fontaine, um, a company whose uh, pastel paper I have used an awful lot. And the reason this particular pad attracted me was simply because it is a black watercolour paper. It's obviously designed for watercolour. It's a lovely weight, it's 300 grams. It's cold pressed, so that's another name for the not surface because it's not hot pressed and it's not rough it's in the middle so um, you've got the cold pressed but this was the bit that interested me so you know if you follow my work a lot that I love 100% cotton papers and uh, I was struggling to find a black watercolour paper that was 100% cotton but look ding 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 uh, Claire Fontaine have risen to the challenge and this is cotton so it's going to do really interesting lovely things with my watercolour. Spiral bound so that you can uh, take it out uh, on location. Haven't decided whether I'm going to use it in the pad or torn out tomorrow uh, but let's introduce you to the surface and you'll see a little bit of prep that I have already done. So it's nice and thick you can hear that in me flicking it and it's got a sort of nondescript surface so it's not desperately smooth which is not something that I particularly enjoy working on and it's not too rough 
either. So it sort of falls in between those categories. I've played about with a few things, which I'm going to share with you in a second. Um, and the paper hasn't buckled. It's sat in the pad very nicely. So I'm very excited about demonstrating on this tomorrow. So I have um, got a little bit of preparation here. Um, this is something that I will continue working on this afternoon, ready for tomorrow. I've got a black and white version of the photograph that I am working on, and you'll see the photograph in full colour uh, tomorrow. This is a photograph very, very kindly uh, lent to me by a photographer called Sean Revel, who I'm immensely grateful for because my photography skills are really not up to this. I haven't quite got to the bottom of what sort of dragonfly that is yet. I'm sure somebody tomorrow will um, be able to tell me. I can't decide if it's a darter or a chaser. I'm fairly sure it's not a dragonfly in the true sense of the word because its tail is too fat. But I'm going to let better informed people than me give uh, me some advice over that uh, tomorrow. And here's my line drawing, which is what I am going to use uh, to transfer onto the watercolour paper. And again, you will see me demonstrate that tomorrow. Uh, Geraldine is saying, I'm late viewing in. Good morning, Geraldine. I've got this black watercolour paper from your Hoshanda presentation. Looking forward now to your demonstration. So, uh, Geraldine, I'll be demonstrating it again on Hoshanda uh, on Friday. So I'm, I'm hoping that that will help you out a little bit. Now, one of the things I thought I would show you, because I'm hoping that you will think that it's interesting to hear about how I do my prep for various demonstrations that I have and various tests that I do. You can see the start of them up here. I was um, playing around with the different sorts of materials that I could get to show up on the watercolour surface. Now, as I've already discussed, on the Van Gogh watercolour paper, I used watercolour and Posca pen, and that is a combination that I, I really enjoy. But I wanted my dragonfly tomorrow to have a bit of pizzazz. I wanted it to really kind of be sharp and show up. So I've been experimenting with a few different things, and this is what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, I've got FW inks here. So these are acrylic inks. These are made by Dale Rowney. And I've got two here. I've got the dark green and I've got the light green as well. And that's what I've got dribbled on over in this top corner. What I'm going to do is drop my camera down. Just uh, try and do it as smoothly as I possibly can so that you can see some of the things that I'm talking about in close up. So here you've got the light green and here you've got the dark green, just dribbled on. Dark green is obviously very subtle. The light green has got a little bit more pizzazz. So I kind of scribbled those about on the paper to see how they would show up and I'm really pleased with that. I'm hoping that will form the background of my dragonfly tomorrow. Uh, just looking at the comments and I can see that actually the lovely Helen has uh, answered Linda uh, for me. How do you transfer onto black paper? I'm going to be using white trace down tomorrow. Helen is absolutely right and I will take you through that. Also, it's described in my book as well if you uh, need more information on that. Um, I think that's uh, that answers the questions uh, so far. If I will go back through the questions uh, on the Facebook stream uh, after this broadcast is over, just in case I've missed anything, because sometimes they flash by me so quickly, I can't always acknowledge them. So there's the FW inks. Um, those are going to feature in the background of my dragonfly tomorrow. I'm quite excited about that. Uh, I'm also going to be featuring good old white gouache. So this is like I was using on the beak of my Buffy painting. So uh, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this out onto the paper so that you can see it. White gouache uh, used to be called body colour, was used by the likes of Turner to beef up his watercolours a little bit. And he liked working on coloured surfaces too. He used to work an awful lot on a blue laid paper and needed something white for his cloud studies. So here is my uh, white gouache and I'm going to make that up into a single cream consistency and you can see that that's really beautifully bright white and but I can also get some subtle grey shades out of it as well. So where it's layered up over the top of my uh, black watercolour paper 
I can make it actually quite subtle. So that's going to feature really nicely for my highlights in tomorrow's demonstration. Now you may notice up here as well, I've got quite a lot of kind of marks, scratchy marks, um, testing out colours. And that's where one of my favourite products comes into play, and that's the Posca pens. So these are paint markers. They um, originally designed for sort of illustrators and graffiti artists and those kind of things. I was a little bit late to the party. These have been around for donkey's years. But I have to say that I do like them for detail. And I've been playing around with the colours. So these are uh, a fine tip. This is the, for those of you who know, this is the PC1M. So it's got quite a nice fine point on it. Uh, this is the ivory. So not quite as white as the white but nice and subtle. Um, what else have we got here? We've got the straw yellow, which is running out a little bit and could do with a bit of a shake. We have got the, uh, what's this one? Uh, green. Um, look at that. Isn't that lovely on the black? Like those a lot. Uh, we've got uh, brown. Um, again, which is showing up rather nicely. And then I'm going to be um, a little bit sneaky as well. So here is a black. Now, why would you use a black pen on black paper? For the same reason that you use white paint or white pen on white paper. Because if you make a bit of a boo-boo, you can go back through and you can use the black pen to cancel it out. So for a bit of editing tomorrow, I'm probably going to be using the black pen. Now, why do I love Posca pens so much? Let's just show you a slightly fatter one. This is the 3M, so it's got a, a felt tip. I love Posca so much because it is water soluble when it's wet and waterproof when it is dry. So while those pens are still damp on the paper, I can take a wet brush to them and I can bleed that color out. So it means that, where's that lovely green? that I'm enjoying quite a lot this morning. I can take that green and if I'm very quick with my brush, look how I can smudge out the edges. So then it turns really into a paint marker rather than just being used for the lines. And if you think about it, if I start, let's pull this back into shot a little bit. If I start combining the acrylic ink with a bit of the Posca pen, then I can start to get some quite interesting, subtle variations, both for my backgrounds and for the dragonfly themselves. So I've got all sorts of interesting things going on. Now, this little bit here is hopefully going to be the star of my show tomorrow. So let me just put, pick the paper up and I'm hoping that you can see that we've got a bit of a shimmer going on there. Now, what is it that I'm going to be using for that? Obviously, this is going to feature for some of the dragonfly body and for the wings. And it's this project, which has featured on a Technic Tuesday before. But now this is where I am going to bring it into play. So this is the new Rembrandt watercolour that's called a chameleon. And this is the blue, green, gold version. So um, I have squeezed it out ready into my pan because I prefer the consistency of the paints when they have dried off a little bit. And I'm gonna add some water to it to reconstitute it. And I'm hoping that you can see that on the bristles of my brush, let's just take my hand away, I'm starting to get those little um, iridescent particles coming onto my brush. So when it goes down onto the paper, look at that. Over the top of that black, it then starts to shine. So let's pick that up into the camera and you can see I've got that lovely kind of iridescent thing going on. And I'm hoping that those colors, that color even, over the top of some of my other things that I've laid down, like the acrylic ink, like the Posca, I can get a little bit of shimmer and shine going on. So let's get those up into the camera and I'm hoping that you can see those. So this is exactly the sort of thing that I do to test out the materials ahead of my demonstration. Now, obviously, a lot of the time when I'm doing demonstration, I know exactly the combinations and how things work or I'm fairly 
confident I can predict how the materials are going to work. But because this is a new paper for me, and because this is um, a subject that I haven't really tackled before in this way, I'm doing these little bits of tests so that nothing is a great surprise. And that way I can refer back to this uh, sheet tomorrow when I do my demonstration and then uh, I can be fairly safe in the knowledge that I can predict how it's all going to come out. So let's just have a quick look at your questions and see if there's anything else I can answer for anybody. Uh, Linda, good morning, Linda. Where and how do I watch your demonstration tomorrow? So my demonstration tomorrow is for the SAA. Let's just take you back to uh, the front on shot so that uh, you can actually see my face as I'm talking to you. Um, I'm demonstrating for the SAA tomorrow. If you are a member, you'll be able to log into the page and you'll be able to watch it live or equally, you'll be able to watch it via catch up too. Um, in my social media tonight and tomorrow is going to be the link for how you can do it. And when this um, broadcast is finished, I will pop the link onto my blog and I'll pop it into this thread too. So you can come back and you can make sure that uh, you know the exact link for where to go. There are resources on there. There's the line drawing, the photograph and all the materials that you're going to need. And the materials won't be so unusual when you look at the list now because you can refer back to this uh, Technique Tuesday and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Helen's put, that's handy. I've just bought that chameleon paint. Excellent timing. <laughs> Always good. Um, Alison D. Uh, presumably the Daniel Smith iridescence and duochrome would give the same effect as the Rembrandt. Um, yes, it absolutely. In the fact that they will sit on top of the black watercolour paper. They're just different because the iridescence and the duochrome, they don't have that glittery kind of content, which is why I've been um, experimenting with the Rembrandt and why it's been going so well. But there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't use something else as an alternative. So you could use, uh, you could even use glitter glue if you wanted to, or some sort of mica powder or perlex or any of those kind of things, just to give a bit of a shimmer on those dragonflies' wings tomorrow. Uh, Lou is saying, would the sparkly paint show up sparkly after the original painting is scanned for prints? No, it won't. There's no real way of getting um, iridescence to show up in photography unless you have, when you have it printed, you have an overlay over the top so that you have it added back on like a spot varnish or any of those kind of things. Or unless you go back through your prints and, and hand tint afterwards. It just looks like it's got a kind of glint. I've had that trouble with uh, using silver leaf and the like. Everybody um, has that problem. Um, there is no reason at all why you couldn't get a professional printer to print on top of something that had a glitter to it, like a glitter card or any of those kind of things. But nothing is going to show up like your painting, unfortunately. Um, uh, Jean says, hi, Alison, can I use my metallic paints, please? Yeah, absolutely. Use whatever metallic paints you've got. Be interesting to know what sort you had. Um, Alison D says, so more expenditure again, Mrs. Foote. Mrs. Foote, just in case you ever wonder why some people call me Mrs. Foote, um, Foote is my married name, Alison Board is my professional name, and I go under both guises, so if you happen to trip over me uh, as Alison Foote, I'm still the same person. And yes, sorry Ali D, uh, more money to spend. Um, oh, Pauline is saying, what about glitter eyeshadow? Give it a try. I tell you what might be interesting is to mix glitter eyeshadow in with gum arabic. So gum arabic is the binder for watercolours. Because I'm thinking that if you use glitter eyeshadow, it might be a bit like pastel and it might be uh, quite easily smudgeable. But a little bit of gum arabic, that might fix it. I don't know. I'm putting it out there. Uh, Linda, thanks, Ali, for the info. Yes, I'm an SAA member, also an Amethyst member. Useful demo, by the way. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Love sparkle. Right, I am hoping that um, that has answered the majority of your questions. I do hope you can join me uh, tomorrow over on the SAA page if you are a member. Don't forget that I'm back on Hashanda. Anybody can see my Hashanda demonstrations on Friday. And my shows are at 7am and 11am. 11am, much more hospitable. 7am if you can't sleep. I will be there and I will be demonstrating um, the black watercolour paper, some things that you might not have seen before, um, such as brushable wax resist, 
and uh, we've got some new line drawings for you and some new photographs uh, so I'm really hoping that you can tune in then I'm going to refer back to my notes so don't forget that Sky channel 673 free sat channel 817 free view channel 85 or if you're not in the UK or if you uh, don't particularly want to watch it on television you can use the internet and you can go to hashanda.com Thank you very much for joining me for this Technique Tuesday. I hope uh, to do lots more of these live in the future. Like I said, I am going to be taking a couple of days off for my wedding anniversary at the weekend, but I will be back next week. And if there's anything you ever want to see on Technique Tuesday, drop me a line. I would love to hear from you and I'll see if I can factor it in. Take care, everybody. Uh, stay safe and I will see you very soon. Bye.